If it wasn't copyrighted right now, I would be playing the Rocky theme song because I'm about to go milk my cow. So one of the things that I'm taking out with, I've got rags, I've got soapy water. Maya is meeting me out there with the feed, the brushes, uh, obviously a, a pail and a milk tote to pour the milk into. Another thing I'm taking out is some avocado oil. Um, I need to get a little squeeze bottle or something to make it a lot easier and just keep it with my milking stuff. But one of the things that I learned from Hannah is to put oil on your hands to milk because it just makes everything slide easier uh, rather than doing it dry and it's more comfortable for the cow and it just kind of helps keep the skin on her udder in better shape. So I'm going to take this out. There's not very much in it and I'm going to get something that I can put this in for the future. It's still chilly this morning, but it was 37 when I got up. It was still dark. That is like two or three Celsius. So I mean, very nearly to freezing. I don't think we're supposed to freeze for a couple more weeks, but it also, last night, the low was forecast at like 42, and so it got cooler than they had originally said. So we'll see how long we go before it freezes. Look at this garden glowing in the morning light. Isn't that lovely? Ah. Hey girl, you ready to get going? Ah. Yeah, I know you're ready for us to be done. I had big plans for this video. This is the most anticlimactic moment because I've milked what I think I'm going to be able to. All right, I'm a noob at cow milking. Um, and really, while Hope is like bomb proof at home, like she's not steppy and all that stuff at her old home with the person she's been with since she was born four years ago, this is new and we're learning. I got about a gallon. Um, which is pretty good. We had a hard time getting her to stand still for me at first, but Maya would take her and walk her in a circle. Apparently that works also. Horse, the... horse trick. <laughs> Dang, I didn't know what else to do. Like, well, if she wouldn't stand. With moving and not eating grain, with every time she stepped sideways, it worked. She yeah. stopped stepping And then sideways. he took her, and anytime she, she like kept stepping away from me, because we don't have a stanchion. Um, well, I mean, she didn't need one. Well, she didn't so need I didn't one really there. Build one. I'd rather her just get used to us and just stand like she did. At right, home. and that we know she's capable of that. So, anyway, so if she stepped sideways away from me, he took her and walked her in a circle and brought her back. And as soon as she started eating, I'd start milking again. And it took about four circles, and she finally stood. But um, I'm gonna have to work up the hand strength to be able to do that really well. Plus, she w she just wasn't letting her milk down, so I had to bring the calf in. I'd say a gallon is pretty good. I think a gallon is pretty I mean, good. And Hannah was only getting two and a half gallons. Yeah, but she's the boss. She's like a beast when it comes to milking. Hannah milks. It's insane. Y'all seen it? Yeah, I put it on a video, and it was nuts. But I've uh, seen milk machines do worse. <laughs> I know. But I feel okay about that. Um, we had a big uh, plan to get like really dynamic, be cool beautiful. shots. I'll do it. Once we, <laughs> you'll see that video in a couple of weeks. Once so I don't need Jeremiah holding her on a lead rope, like we'll be able to do that. I, I plan on. a little overzealous with yeah, our hopes Maybe this a little. Oh, all right guys, what? first time milking a cow, Jessica's super nervous. <laughs> Let's get the camera on, get all these dynamic shots. <laughs> okay. Me, overzealous? <laughs> no. But we got it. We got the milk. We it. got the milk, that's the important part. <laughs> Here's a piece of advice for all of those of you who do create content. It's okay to not be an expert. It is best if you are not an expert to go ahead and disclose that on the front end. Like it would be silly for me to try to make how to care for a cow or milk cow videos. Now what I am making is, hey, I'm gonna share the journey with you as I learn these things. And there'll be plenty to learn in that. But like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm figuring this out. One thing that Hope does is that she really holds her cream back. And so you milk her and the milk you get at first is like super, um, kind of thin looking and then you bring the baby in and you start milking and it's like so creamy it's yellow so you have to bring the baby in for right now and once the baby's weaned once honey is weaned after about a week i'll milk her and get everything now one thing i want to share that we are doing um hannah brought this by and she'd actually sent me the links and i had ordered some of this a few of these products but this is a a line called synergy and they make like holistic cow care products and this is called utter spray and it's like 
essential oils and it's basically kind of like a lotion it's castor oil aloe vera a variety of things and I and sprayed it and massaged it all in to hopes utter the reason I did this is because the other day you guys saw the video where we unloaded her and we made a total rookie mistake and our trailer is pretty new and the floor was really clean and it didn't have traction and I've learned since then that you can like nail a cattle panel down flat you can get rubber mats or you can just put like sawdust or you know broken down bedding on there to give traction to make sh to give traction to make sure that an animal like this if they lay down that they can get back up because their manure is really wet and what happened is she laid down she couldn't get back up and she ended up kind of flopping out of the trailer now in the video it did look like she hit her udder real bad she actually got a little bit of a mark on her leg uh, kind of a bruise but her udder was fine we inspected that the worry is if a cow does hit their udder that they can get infections and so right now just with the, sh the trauma of moving that whole uh, traumatic situation I'm putting this on her udder regularly and massaging, massaging it in and we're just trying to make sure that no infection sets in and there aren't any signs of that right now um, and hopefully it stays that way you are enjoying your breakfast honey I posted the video where we made the mistake and where Hope had a had an entrance onto our farm that was a little less than graceful. Most everybody that watched that was very gracious, but of course you get some backlash anytime you share where you did things that weren't right, where you messed up. It is tempting sometimes, honestly, when you're doing something like this, to just leave that out. I could have easily just left that out. We could have left that clips out, showed her walking around. No, nobody would have been any the wiser. Oh yeah, we unloaded her. We got her here today, and just just cut up, you know, cut off that little seven minutes that was scary of that whole thing. I mean, it wasn't even seven minutes worth of footage, but that's how long that took. That was about seven scary minutes, and we showed some clips from it. And the reason I do that is because. Right now, all over, people are leaving cities like in droves. I mean, there are people by the tens of thousands, potentially even the hundreds of thousands, that are relocating out of cities. People have no farming experience at all. And they're doing things like buying new trailers and their first dairy cow. And in that situation, I, I wasn't videoing because I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, if this cow breaks her leg, we have to put her down before she even steps foot on our soil. I'm like immediately like, oh gosh, no. But then I stopped and I told Ezra because I was holding the door open. And I said, hey, Ezra, please go get me my camera. And I decided then, no, I made a rookie mistake. And when as soon as, as she got out and she was okay, all I felt was grateful that my cow had survived my ignorance. <laughs> I made a mistake. And there are so many people right now that are ignorant of how to do this. And here, here's the thing, you may be. And what I wanna do is be the kind of person that puts an end to the shame of ignorance by saying, hey, I was ignorant and I am so thankful that it did not cost me greatly, that it did not cost an animal their life. And so what I wanna do is allow my mistake to educate you so that you don't go into a situation like this with ignorance because honestly your cow is more important to me than my pride and while yes it's kind of embarrassing sometimes i'll be honest it's embarrassing to be ignorant but it is important that when we are coming out of that cycle of ignorance and we are learning these new things we weren't taught this i am very much a textbook millennial i grew up in middle school an aol instant messenger i lived in a neighborhood i had never even seen a chicken in person except for at the fair maybe until i had them like this is completely new and everything that i know right now about farming and homesteading and gardening and growing food and i might add i'm pretty good at it not an expert but i put food on our table we work really hard we figured things out we've made a lot of mistakes but we've we've gained a lot of knowledge i didn't know this stuff 10 years ago and the thing is is that if i right now was making these videos for 10 years ago me i wouldn't hide a dang thing because i would want to protect that girl from the heartache that i know is coming for her and i've faced the heartache and right now 
I'm gonna show you my cow flop out of the trailer and I'm gonna feel a little embarrassed by it. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to kind of try to cover that situation with even more grace because I'm so thankful it didn't end worse. But I'm gonna tell you all that stuff because I care about your cow. You ready to take this delicious milk in? Milk, my first milk. I need some milk back, right meow. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm ready to take it in. Um, in the future, I would like to be, you know, have my stuff together enough to like have my filter thing set up on my pail so we can pour it in. But right now it was just, I was mostly just like, okay, let's just do this and get inside. I don't think I was fully confident that I was going to get any milk. I wasn't. I didn't it's okay. Have... I'll let you figure it out because you're like, we just need to, we just need to make it simple. And I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking this really is not that big of a step. But <laughs> If removing one step made you feel more confident, I was like, remove the step. <laughs> Let's go straight into the house. Let's go straight into the house. And if you want, I mean, how big is the strainer on the bottom? Oh no, you can't put your mouth on that. <laughs> I'll strain it straight into you. Goodness, it is warm in here. It's time to feed my sourdough, which is going wonderfully, by the way. It's so happy and bubbly. I finally got it all like, alive and so now i gotta start learning to make stuff with it okay so i'm gonna strain this i think that may be more than a gallon you can pour it in this i've got this jar clean I kind of got the hang of it there towards the like second half. The first half I was like, oh my gosh, could I do this? But the second half I was like, I can, I can do it. Okay, pause. I've got a clean jar. This other one. There it is, folks. One gallon and a little over a quart. So now we put this in the freezer for an hour. And don't forget it. I can't remember exactly what it is. I should know this. You, it crystallizes the fat molecules or something. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's supposed to help with the flavor. What? <gasps> Look at that little hunter. He's not supposed to be up there. Jamie! <laughs> For shame. He doesn't even care. He's like, I is taller than you. <laughs> Y'all, whenever Benjamin was very small, he still likes to watch Charles Dowding, but there was about a year and a half there that he watched Charles Dowding every night before he went to bed, which Charles Dowding is a YouTuber, um, and he does gardening his beautiful gardens noted gardens and we have seen so many of his videos because ben that's what he wanted to watch every single night he would get ready to lay down he would want to lay down on my bed and watch charles doubting on the tv well i posted a photo once of ben at like age three or four sitting at the table eating a snack and watching charles doubting videos and charles doubting responded to it and he said well i'm chuffed <laughs> which for those of you who are British like we don't we don't say that here but I say that now because Charles Dowding said it to me and I got really excited and so now when I look at things like that milk I think well I'm chuffed <laughs> that's exactly what I just thought all right you guys I just finished editing the video that you're watching I wasn't sure how much I actually got um for those of you who are looking forward to lovely morning milking videos. I am also looking forward to making them. Today was just not my day to make the video that I wanted to make, but that's okay. This is the very real part of the process and I'm learning new things and I'm happy to share the journey with you guys. Now I did want to cover because I know I'll get this question a lot for a lot of people seeing like nearly a gallon and a half of milk coming in in one day. And that's the very low end. I mean, we're going to be looking at two and a half gallons. And then after we wean honey, we're going to be looking at five to seven gallons a day, which is a ton of milk. And people are like, what are you going to do with all that milk? And one of the reasons I was so excited to get a dairy cow, because I've had dairy goats for a while and you get milk from dairy goats, but 
with cows you get this massive amount of this lovely rich cream and that to me was such a big leap in food sustainability because I, I got a cream separator. I haven't even set it up yet. I will put a link to the one that I got. Um, I did a lot of research and they really range from like super cheap to super expensive. And I ended up buying one that was a little on the cheaper side. Um, it had really good reviews and I was able to find um, some videos like showing about it. Everybody said the instructions were bad, but there were really an ample amount of videos on YouTube. And, um, I just got it on Amazon. I ordered that and that was like a big tool in moving forward with milk. And then I have a lot of cultures. I do know how to make cheese. I'm going to start with lots of soft cheeses and making sour cream, cream cheese, and butter. Those products, I would say cream for coffee, sour cream, cream cheese, and butter, and yogurt. Those are the things that we use the most as far as dairy products go. And in the past, we've used our goat's milk, and we have completely offset. When our goats are in milk, we don't buy milk from the store. Uh, we just drink goat's milk. But I've never been able to do things like make butter. I've never had enough milk to make very much cheese as well as have milk to drink. Um, because we have, we have a lot of kids, and so we go through a lot of stuff. We go through gallons of milk in a week. Things like butter and cream cheese, I mean, we can really go through that stuff. So I'm really hoping to utilize this dairy to really make a big leap in food sustainability. We already do grow the majority of our meat and having dairy and then once the garden is back in full swing, we really will pre be producing most of what we eat, which is really nice. And the great thing with the cow is, which we are supplementing with some grain, but we have so much pasture and such rich grass and good pasture. I mean, cows eat grass, which grows just because it harnesses the power of the sun. And then the cows then turn that grass, which is growing from the power of the sun, and they turn it into milk, like milk that we get to turn in all those things, which are some of the most expensive things I buy at the grocery store are pasture raised dairy products. And then going from that, and then they're also producing fertilizer because their manure and their urine is so nitrogen rich. It's feeding my pastures. And whenever we begin holding these cows in the barn some, we'll be able to muck that out and use that for compost in the garden. And there's so much richness that's added to the whole cycle of our farm by having this animal. And they're essentially largely living off of the grass, which is coming from the sun, which is really, really cool. Um, I'm so excited. This feels like such a massive leap in sustainability. And though it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, and hopefully the worst of our mistakes are behind us, it's gonna be worth it. And, and being able to make these leaps in, into sustainability sometimes require kind of tackling your ignorance, doing the best you can, pushing forward and figuring out how to, to learn how to do new things. So thank you guys for hanging out with me and being along with us on that wonderful adventure. I bless you until next time.